Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of uh, Kaizen Spotlight where we have very insightful and interesting conversations with uh, Kaizen champions people who stand for quality who stand for efficiency and who have uh, been uh, promoting these practices within their organization and today joining us from Pune India is Mr Rahul Dev hello Rahul san how are you thank you for joining us thank you for letting me talk to you all today how are you jen thank you very much rahul san and uh, viewers uh, for for the benefit of the viewers i would like to formally um, introduce and give a, a background to our uh, guest today uh, rahul uh, rahul san is an um, injectable device man if i can say that and during the conversation he's going to tell us quickly what it is but he has spent 27 of years of his you know years in this industry where uh his experience and expertise lies in uh manufacturing um devices for example like syringes which are pre-filled with medication and these are called the injectable drug uh, delivery devices uh he started off his career uh, as a trainee in his uh, father's company called top syringe manufacturing company in mumbai india and um, later on this particular company had a, a joint venture a joint venture with uh, top japan uh, later on uh, this company uh, he moved on to kaisha manufacturing which became scott kaisha and since 2011 he moved into uh, detweiler detweiler is uh, one of the global leaders in uh, sealing solutions and he was instrumental in setting up a greenfield project uh, in india for detweiler <clears throat> and um, very soon uh this uh, uh this site became um, extremely good with its practices and uh, it was often recognized as a leader when it comes to uh, on time in full delivery or you know uh, in absolute high quality performance um even the attrition rate the number of people who would leave the organization was very very low uh, and i think uh, attrition rate is a very uh, good barometer of uh, management and leadership um, quality um and rightly rightly so the organization recognized uh, the fantastic contribution rahul san has made uh, at the indian uh, the indian site and and recently he was elevated as the global head uh, for operational uh, for 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 all the sites across um, you know detweiler's um, global um, you know network Uh, thank you very much apologies if i missed out thank you again rahul san for joining us and before i i jump in and ask a few questions um for which i would request very um, you know quick answers from you sir i would like uh, i would request you to take a minute and explain what are these uh, you know drug delivery mechanisms that we are talking about for the viewers benefit of the viewers thank you yes sir uh so these are called prefillable systems sterile prefillable systems so in the injectable world they call as pfs so in pfs you have the device or the injection already prefilled means you have in a syringe you have the medication already prefilled so all you when you go to the doctor the doctor takes it out of the takes a syringe takes out the needle shield and injects you with the drug uh, previously it used to be or it still is uh, in most of the cases it's it's you have a vial you have a rubber stopper and the alu seal so you break the alu seal you take a disposable syringe with a needle then you put it in uh, insert it take out the drug then you take the needle off throw it off and take a new needle attach it and then you inject into a cast into a patient so the so prefill systems takes away all that the uh, earlier requirement and it's directly it has the dose accuracy is higher uh, mix ups are much lower and uh, it's it's uh, much more safer that way so that's what prefillable syringes uh, prefill injectable devices are so and you see this this will become more and more the norm and its, it's acceptance is getting bigger it, <clears throat> so it's been around for uh, decades now uh but uh, it's picking up in india also very well in the developed countries it's much more accepted because the cost structure is higher but the safety feature is also much much uh, higher but i see the growth uh, for both uh, because vials uh, have been traditionally uh, our uh, device for uh, 
containing our injectables uh, an easiest way to transport it uh, yeah. and the syringes is an addition which will be which is growing so both have the market to grow fantastic thank you very much now let me uh, plunge into uh, our area of interest and uh, that's kaizen operational excellence and you have uh, we have always recognized the fact that you have been a, a great champion of these best practices and uh, you have also reaped the benefit your plant your people have uh, seen the impact of it whether it is in terms of uh, you know better quality better on time delivery etc so my first uh, question i want you to reflect and share with us is what sort of really got uh, you know got to you, got into you about kaizen and what attracts you to this concept of kaizen at the, at the very at the very beginning so at datweiler when we started the dps that is the datweiler production system uh, of operation excellence which we uh, started we had a long period there was a lot of effort put into it at that time i was still a site director and i was part of the team and the first thing i thought that uh, i have to do much more work now and one more thing has been added to my so i was one of the first naysayers in the group i would say okay. but when 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 i did come back and we put a team together and we saw how in small pilot projects how 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 much positivity was there and how much the people on the shop floor accepted it and how much they felt part of the organization and uh, belonging and uh, they felt that uh, somebody is listening to them and they they and they they are valued within the organization that's where it changed my mind very good so uh, i think the key point you're saying is uh, people started owning the owner sense of ownership um, is one of the uh, key points that attracts you to this concept of kaizen very good and it's how many years since you've been on this journey 2015 we started developing it in house uh, it took us 2 to 3 years globally uh, team was there which was put together we and 2017 onwards we started rolling it out uh, in all our sites globally uh, and india was one of the initial sites where we started our roll out together with our belgium brand very good so we've been in the journey since 2017 yes 2017 fantastic so um talking of your uh, excellence journey your operational excellence journey tell me before i i can even ask you about what has been some outcomes or positives what has been the challenge i think uh, we are all first we need to be aware of the challenges because no no such initiative uh, transformation you know efforts are easy so what are the, some of the challenges you have faced i think the challenge which we faced at the beginning was mindset beginning from mind I, I, I was one of the first challenges to overcome, but then it was also the management, uh, your management team, which uh, already feels overburdened with everything that they have to do, and this is one more additional thing that has yeah. to be added. So I think the challenge is to overcome and open up your management team's mind towards this thing, and their acceptance is the first thing that you require before yeah. going down to the shop floor. And as you started rolling out, is uh, are there some? Uh, impediments some 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 obstructions that you still deal with that you have to face yes yes it's always there so together with the i, I think it's a daily job specific uh, operation excellence and there is always some speed breakers or hurdles which are there or some time constraints which are there and i think the head of operations or the site director should be the one who should be pushing it towards through towards the team with together with the dps manager because the uh, towards the uh, operation excellence manager so that's that's and and important. viewer and my dear viewers it's it's a very important key point that uh, rahul san has just mentioned operational excellence is a daily activity and very often one of my favorite quotes is a lot of you know we have always grown up hearing to this quote that rome was not built in a day but i wonder how many people ask then in how many days was rome the rome actually built you know so uh the answer i am told the smartest answer i have got is rome was not built in a day it was built every day okay. you know so so this is exactly what it is what you're saying and uh, very interesting so tell me uh, as you have been on this journey what are some of the uh, business impacts and also some of the people or cultural impacts I, if you can share some like you know you said you there have been improvements on on various fronts can you can you recollect some Uh, yes i think uh, culturally i was uh, means i i always uh, believed that uh, we indians can do 
uh, much better than what we are doing right now and we because we work very well under pressure we are very re- resilient uh, uh, people and uh, the only thing as, is that we are not very structured in certain way and the last mile is always the biggest difficulty and that is what my concern was when the rollout happened is that maybe we are doing very well in india at the beginning because it's interesting it's new and it's uh, flashy and shiny and the results are there it was and i knew that the european sites would catch up but they 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 are more structured so the they, it would last longer so that was my fear but i was very pleasantly surprised with the indian team uh, my, my 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 team over here who uh, took this on and uh, the journey continues and they do it yes there are arguments there are challenges which come up there are there are disagreements but uh, what i like is uh, they are committed they, they disagree but they are committed to the operational excellence that is there very good and any any um, some improvements specific hard improvements that you can remember in terms of either uh, throughput time reduction or yield or quality some of the business um, sort of impacts yes i think uh, specifically uh, the the branch of dartweiler that we are in we are in dartweiler healthcare uh, we have also have automotive food and beverage and we are basically in the healthcare business and uh, yeah. we provide the rubber stoppers for all the uh, syringes the cartridges and the vials so at the end of every uh, every vial syringe or, or or a cartridge is a patient's life so our job is to improve patient's lives and that is something is of a message which we bring down to our uh, our teams and our people and to do that quality is uh, very essential what quality leaves the plant uh, Uh, so what we have seen is that whenever we have any events internal events uh, specifically focusing on mix up and extrinsic contamination because those are the main two things which can affect patient safety we we look at we 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 actually promote our people to uh, come up with means actually show us the events which are happening and record them and not to hide them and we actually reward them for showing us the events because then we can have our improvement because once you have Uh, once you have the events uh, you know that the events are happening and you uh, and you log it then you can improve on it and we have seen when we when we have continuous simple one projects towards those events our number of quality complaints comes down so we have started focusing on the quality dimension directly so the higher number of events that the our colleagues report the lower number of customer complaints we have fantastic i think rahul san you have hit the nail uh, on the head because um, you know i think the difference between i always uh, take immense uh, you know sort of uh, pleasure in always highlighting that the difference between a good company and a bad company is uh, good companies have more problems and bad mm-hmm. companies have less problems i mean uh, you know uh, the point i'm trying to make is that the entire system of operational excellence kaizen Uh, they are all sort of oriented towards celebrating problems to highlighting problems to throwing out problems so people can solve it and uh, i as, as taichi ono from you know toyota would say the biggest problem is no problem you know if you have yeah. <laughs> if you don't find problems then life is fantastic you know so that sensitivity to problems uh, what do you call as a problem and and see unless you have unless you know what is normal you will never know what is abnormal so that is why setting standards becomes extremely important because that is when you will know if you're deviated from the standards so thank you and uh, as we start winding down i'm going to be asking you a few uh, quick questions but one uh, one message you know we are all the world is going through difficult times and any message that you would like to give uh, young professionals business leaders uh, i mean how coming out from your experience dealing with uh, these challenging times probably business for you has been good because you are in a different kind of an industry but nevertheless what is the, the message you would like to give i i to all uh, people out there or young young uh, team members who are joining or working is i i would just tell them to be more empathetic i think human values are more important means work will go on uh, automation is there everything will happen but yeah. how you treat people how should be the way you would like to be treated i think I, i think being human or uh, you know being empathetic is more important try to go into the other person's shoe and think of what they are going through or what they are feeling once you are able to put your hand on somebody's shoulder and say that i'm there for you to take care of you that person is going to do whatever but be honest about it don't don't play with this so emp- i think empathy is very important in today's world uh, 
uh, absolutely sir. what is going on absolutely we recently had uh, an opportunity to listen to the boss of nestle in india and he was mm-hmm. talking the same thing that people about everything is what even before performance productivity i think that that's the focus of the day today because if you are there for the people then the people will be there for you uh, in you know moving forward so thank you very much very inspiring again it's a very important foundation of kaizen we call it respect for people which you also mentioned it's about respecting people and treat people the way you like to be treated so before you go i'm going to ask you a few quick questions what's your favorite sport i know you went to don bosco school so i'm sure you must have spent a lot of time out in the football field yes i am uh, don bosco school and also bengali blood so football is uh, always there and uh, so, your favorite european team yeah that's uh, very difficult it's it's it's, it's liverpool actually okay. for many years and um, um i'm sure you make up you find some time what was the last book you read i i, I read a lot on audibles uh, so uh, the the book that i'm reading is uh, the, the bengalis to know where i come from but the last book uh, that i read before this is uh, uh, the 18 letters of bhagat singh it was very really nice 18 letters of bhagat singh yeah okay. very nice very nice and a personality living or dead who who has inspired you it's uh, i would say really I, i i look at all the people around me and that's uh, i really cannot point out to one it's it's at different phases different persons have uh, inspired me uh, and, and actually my family has always been we have been through some ups and downs so i would say the family members have stood by me so they they really that's who they i they are your heroes yeah yeah, yeah your right. heroes and um, with that uh, your father would be one of those um, personalities yeah that that's always are but i think mom has the bigger role uh, because they are more resilient and uh, yeah. they are more empathetic very good so i am uh, one one indian business leader you really look up to obviously mr tata ratan tata ratan tata and what do you do to relax uh, rahul sir Uh, watch movies cook okay you like cooking okay yeah i love so, cooking yes. even even uh, that's my favorite i love cooking it's extremely yeah. creative and relaxing yeah. you know yeah. it, it may not be so for your wife because they always say you mess up the kitchen uh, but at least yeah. <laughs> while you're in the process and um, what is your favorite uh, travel destination my favorite i it, it, it's uh, in india it's goa always Okay. And if it's uh, abroad, then I can afford to stay longer. Then it is always Italy. Mm, very good. So there you have uh, viewers a very interesting uh, uh, personality uh, who is who is very you know has got a wide variety of interest. He likes to cook. He loves football, and he has um, been um, a, a true champion of uh, Kaizen and operational excellence. And what he gave uh, to the organization. has led him to a position where today he is um, heading the global operations multiple sites and i think your sites are in america uh, please remind me sir germany italy uh, india and hopefully in china so fantastic so thank you very much uh, rahul san for your time we really enjoyed these conversations and these are you know small conversations that we have uh, with people like you because it's impossible for uh, you know anyone to reach out to individuals and and we sincerely hope that these small you know interviews that we do in you know interactions that we you know we have reach out you know reaches out to people and they're able to uh, to understand uh, you know what wonderful work that people like you are doing thank you again for your time sir thank you jan thank you very much happy to be here.